Okay, good morning everyone and uh, welcome to our mentoring hour today. Uh, thank you all for joining us, uh, joining the call. Uh, today, uh, we're going to spend some time uh, sharing, discussing, learning about uh, preparing for your calling. Uh, I guess all, almost all of us um, who are in Bible college, going through courses, going through the training, um, I have that question, how do we prepare ourselves for our calling, for what God has in store for us? So hopefully the discussions we have uh, would be useful for all of us. So we're just going to pray, then we will get started. Uh, could one of the students um, uh, unmute and uh, pray, and then we will start, please. Praise the Lord. Lord, we come into your throne of grace in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Above Father, remember kindly. We pray for the mentoring hour. Kindly utilize the servant and disclose your words to us. Utilize your servant more mightily and help us to understand the then words and to minister people. Oh God, from starting to ending, be there with us and utilize brother and then servant as his ritual to speak to us. Lord, kindly speak to us through your words. We pray, let your presence be with us as long as this program is here. As we gathered here, to praise your holy name, be the with us, Lord, to learn your scriptures and to do your ministry. In Lord Jesus' name, we pray, God. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, so today, um, the way we're going to approach this, uh, our discussion today is, uh, you know, it's always good to have some sort of a model or a pattern in our minds uh, as we discuss a topic. So today, I'm just going to use the life of King David as uh, an example for us. Uh, and then we will, so we just quickly go through his life. Mo many of us are familiar uh, with uh, the life of King David. And um, uh, so we just use uh, his life as an example, as a pattern, right? Um, I'm not saying that every step and every detail of his life will be repeated in ours. That's not the point. Now, the point is we'll just use his life as an example uh, and we'll try to learn some, gain some insights uh, as how God prepares us for our calling and how we can work with God, co-labor with God uh, to prepare for our calling. So we're going to go through this very, very quickly. Right? So uh, we are familiar with the life of uh, David. Uh, when we look at his um, early his beginnings, you know, it was uh, 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 in a very simple way. You know, he what we first in, uh, read about David is he's taking care of his father's sheep, the youngest in uh, his family. He's given that role, which is almost like you know you're out of sight. Every day you take the sheep, go out, you know, out of sight. Uh, but even during that time, we see in First Samuel 16. Uh, and 17, that uh, certain things in his life become very evident. Now, people see that he's a, uh, he's a man of courage uh, because he is, you know, he protects the sheep. He's, he's very committed to what he's called to do. Uh, he's courageous. He kills the lion, the bear to protect the sheep. People also see um, character in him. People also see his gifting in him. Uh, he's, he's very good in playing music uh, and so on. So basically, in that, in that season or in that time of hiddenness or obscurity, God is actually developing us. While we are doing something that seems, you know, very mundane, very ordinary, God is actually, you know, preparing us for what lies ahead. And we have to be committed in, in, in that, just like how David was. And then comes that recognition of his call uh, in David's life. It happened through... Prophet Samuel coming, I'm on point three now, uh, Prophet Samuel coming and, you know, uh, 
pouring out the holy anointing oil. That was a way of God affirming the call and saying, this is your calling. Now, that doesn't mean the next day he became king or he became, you know, somebody great. No, no, no. It was just a recognition. And that recognition in our lives can come so many ways. It can come just as a simple uh, knowing in your heart. It could come through a prophetic word, as in David's case. Uh, it could come through a dream. It could come through a desire to make a difference in this world in some way. So that recognition um, co coming into our hearts can come in many different ways. In David's case, the prophet Samuel came and spoke over his life. And then we see God bringing him into a place of visibility slowly. Now he's being moved out of being, you know, a shepherd out in the, uh, in the, in the uh, uh, obscure places, slowly being moved into uh, visibility. First thing is he's called to play for the king, you know. So uh, of course the king has a, is in trouble, King Saul, and somebody says, "Hey, David plays very well. Call him." And David comes to play, and so he's, he's brought into that little place of visibility. Doesn't mean he becomes a big person, no. But he's given an opportunity to exercise his gifting. Uh, he's given an opportunity to, to uh, do something with what God is developing in his life. Uh, he plays for the king, and then we see the next big step, which is. You know, he goes and kills Goliath. Now, that is also a big step. But remember, and this is something we're all very familiar with, that when David goes to kill Goliath, uh, he's able to do that because he has he has already developed a history with God, right? He has killed the lion and the bear. He has spent a lot of time out in the in obscurity, in hiddenness, uh, and he has become strong in God. And uh, and so now, when he's you know he's put in this place where he has to face Goliath. He's ready for it. So remember that as God transitions unto uh, us into places of visibility, slowly, small things happening, our history with God is very important. What we have journeyed with God uh, is very important. And we're building, you know, step by step, from faith to faith, from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Nobody gets up and kills Goliath overnight, just like that. There's a history to it. And in David's case, uh, we see how the early years were a, a very important for him. So he kills Goliath. And that, that propels him into another level in his journey with God. Uh, you know, we, we see that all of Israel is celebrating David. Uh, they recognize that, you know, he has, a, he has a young man whom God is raising up and they're celebrating. So he's come into another place uh, of a, a greater visibility. Um, David continues to grow. What's very important is that even as visit, you know, we read this in 1 Samuel 17, um, uh, 17, 18, uh, as David comes into visibility, it's very important. Three times it is said in that chapter, David behaved himself wisely. So this is so important. As God is beginning to give you opportunities and beginning to, you know, bring you into visibility, you need to grow in wisdom. And this is where many people fail in ministry. Overnight, they think I'm a success. Uh, everybody has recognized me, and they do not walk in wisdom. And many people fall right there. So they're like shooting stars. They come there, and, and God, God has given them little visibility, and they, they don't know how to handle that. But in David's case, it was it's so amazing. It Three times it says, David behaved himself wisely. How he related to the king, how he related to all the people, how he related to uh, other, you know, uh, people in the army. He didn't go and tell them, you know, hey, I'm such a great person. You soldiers, you're useless. No, he didn't do that. You know, he behaved himself wisely among all the people. And so as God brings us into visibility, we also need to grow in wisdom. Uh, ask God for that, uh, to, to, to walk with wisdom, to walk wisely, to, to, so that you know how to journey in with what God is doing. Uh, then we see David. Uh, he, uh, you know, there, there's that initial growth. He's, he's, he's forming a good friendship with Jonathan. Jonathan is an important person because uh, he's Saul's son. Uh, and so he's developing that relationship, a friendship with Jonathan. Uh, he's also being recognized as a, as, a, as a warrior, as a man of war. So there is this initial growth, uh, one, in terms of relationship. So as God is bringing the visibility, you need to be watchful over the kinds of you know, relationships or ministry, friendships, people that you surround yourself with. Uh, if we surround ourselves with the wrong kind of people, that could be to our detriment. But if we surround ourselves with people who, who really care about us, as in the case of Jonathan, 
uh, Jonathan was, of course, in a very influential place. But he knew how to, David knew again, how to manage this relationship. You know, and God will do that when in, in those early days, he sets up relationships in our lives. We need to know how to uh, steward those relationships properly um, and not to misuse those relationships. Some people end up misusing relationships, trying to use relationships for their own personal agendas. That's wrong. Uh, or sometimes people don't even nurture relationships. So we, we need to understand that relationships are important as we're growing in ministry with good people. And then also you're seeing David becoming uh, you know, strong in his area, which in this case was as a military leader. A shepherd boy is now developing uh, you know, military capabilities, if you want to, and I'm just using a language here. Uh, so God is transitioning him. You know, he, he's not saying, hey, I was a shepherd boy. I'm going to remain a shepherd boy for the rest of my life. No, 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 no. God is transitioning. He's doing something different, but that is preparation for his life assignment, right? So that's happening right here. He's he's becoming a military leader. He's uh, he's uh, people are recognizing that in his life. But uh, while while all of these wonderful things are happening, suddenly, and I'm sure it was unexpected, David finds himself, uh, uh, you know, in 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 hot water. You could say, for no no fault of his, Saul becomes jealous. King Saul becomes jealous, and he, he's, he's, he's wanting to kill David. Uh, and he attempts twice to kill David while David is serving him. And so now David has to run for his life. Right? So all of a sudden, it almost seems like everything good that's happened so far is torn out of his life. I mean, he has to leave his family. He has to leave the, you know, that, that whole community of people who admired him. Uh, he had to leave his privileged position of serving the king. Uh, because the king has turned against him and now he's running for his life he's living among the caves uh, he's living like a homeless wanderer now this is the man who's going to be king this is the man who's journeyed from being a shepherd to you know this this very envious place so far and suddenly all of that is gone uh, there are times in our journey with god where some of these things will happen in our lives I'm not saying we should go looking for adversity. I'm not saying we should go looking for bad things to happen to us or we should call bad things to happen. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when there are challenges or difficulties or adversity, I understand that this is part of what of a preparation process. This is part of what's going on in our lives for to help us make to help us become stronger. But you see some amazing things that happen during this season of David's life. That is, you know, chapters 18 to chapters 26 for Samuel. Uh, one is that while David is in this, this mode of running for his life, God brings 400 men to him. This is in uh, 1 Samuel 20, 22. Uh, God, or 21, God brings 400 men to join with David. They become part of David's army. So even while things have been totally stripped out of his life, God is building something else. And this is something we must be very, you know, uh, open to. On one hand, things seem to be taken out. On the other hand, new things are being brought in. 400 men come to David. They join. David, actually, this is his first army. Uh, he's lost everything, but now he's, God has brought these 400. Now, when these 400 people come, they actually come in a very desperate situation. The Bible says there that they were all discontented. They were all depressed. They were all in debt. That means they came in really bad shape. But David saw their potential, and that, that's so important for us. That when God is seeing th doing things in our lives, he's actually building something for the future. If you look at it immediately, it looks very bad. But actually, there is potential beyond what meets the eye. And that's what we need to see uh, in people around us. Because God, David saw the potential in these 400 men. Even though on the outside, everything was negative. They were in debt. They were all in distress. And they were all dis you know. Uh, 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 discontented. I mean, they didn't have a good attitude. So all those were negatives, but David saw something more. He saw God building something, although so much had been stripped out of his life. And the other thing we see is David growing in character. Twice he had opportunity to king, kill King Saul, but twice his character got the rose up moment, and he uh, chose not to uh, uh, not to yield, to not stoop down to that level of what opportunity afforded him 
even even though opportunity was there doesn't mean that opportunity is the right thing uh, there is your character is more important than the opportunities that come in your life you know that itself is a big topic to talk about uh, let me just quickly try and finish um the uh, next thing so you know so that david goes through that period of time it's almost like about uh, i think about a seven year period where you know he's he's going through this uh, difficult time in his life and then finally god orchestrate things are happening saul is killed uh, and uh, uh, there is there is now opportunity for david to become king so god sets up that opportunity but you we must see how uh, you know how how david moves into it um, uh, we see this uh, number 11, point number 11 david prays and says god what do you want me to do where do you want me to go now saul is dead where do you want me to go and god tells him go to hebron right so when david comes to hebron as soon as he comes there one tribe, the tribe of Judah, come and say, we want you to be a king. So positioning, being in the right place at the right time, is so important for us to fulfill the call of God. What if David had not come to Judah, uh, I mean to Hebron? What if he had gone to some other city, somewhere else? You know, uh, it's so much, you know, we, we don't know what would have happened, but he, because he came to Hebron under God's leading, that was the place where one tribe came and said, will make be king over us right and so he was king over judah for seven years then after that the next thing happens all of israel comes second samuel 5 all of israel comes and says be king over us so now david has come into his life assignment that was prophesied about you know over 13 years earlier um uh, that you would be king and almost 13 or 17 years earlier and later, after about 17 years, David actually becomes king. So understand, there's a journey we have to make with God. We are not going to step into the life, our life's assignment overnight. It never happens. God prepares us for this calling. And God prepared David. He became our king over all Israel. Now, that was the beginning of the life assignment. That wasn't him having arrived. It was just him finishing the preparation in order to step into the life assignment. Now the real work begins. So that's the point six. You know, there is the consolidation and the expansion. Uh, so there's a lot of work. Uh, we see the battles David fought. We see him capturing different uh, regions. And under David, the whole empire, the, or, or I should say the nation, you know, um, it was extended at its largest extent. David established them. Uh, and while all of that was happening, he did some amazing things. He established, he brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. I, he, uh, God established a covenant with David saying his throne would continue forever, uh, which would, would be fulfilled. Uh, David established the, um, uh, the, the worship in Jerusalem. He set up the tabernacle and he instituted the worship happening, which continued nonstop for 33 years. So all of that happened, and that's part of his life assignment. He's actually doing it, and the work is becoming bigger and bigger. So God takes us to that season, and that's the real you know, work that's to be done. But, of course, as all of that is happening, and uh, David makes some mistakes, and this is something we need to be watchful about. Uh, we all know uh, David committed adultery with Bathsheba, and he got her husband Uriah killed. And uh, when you read 2 Samuel 11, it really tells us, you know, in a time when the kings went to battle, David stayed at home. And at that time is when he fell into sin, which means... There was a moment in David's life, perhaps, he said, you know, oh, everything is going great. I can just relax. I can let my guard down. That was the time he fell. So we should be careful. As God establishes the ministry and all these wonderful things are happening, we should always stay on God and stay about God's work, right? S stay focused. Uh, what, you know, if David had gone into battle as he should have, he would not have fallen into sin. But because he chose to stay home instead of going into battle, that was uh, an opportunity for the enemy to knock him out. Um, of course, God brings correction to David. And the, again, you see the character of David. You see his repentance. His, you see his willingness to uh, correct himself before God. So that's a beautiful thing. Uh, there's another mistake David makes, which is he ignores Absalom. Uh, uh, Absalom was one of his sons who was not, not happy with some of the things that were, ha that were going on in the family. And uh, he tried to get David's attention. The mistake David made is he did not pay attention to Absalom. Uh, he, you know, David could have 
given time for Absalom, but he, he didn't do that. And eventually, Absalom led a rebellion against David, his own son. So this is again a lesson for us to learn. We need to be watchful over every area of what God has given to us, watchful over the people, because people, although they may be good, if their heart gets affected, they will be a cause for problem. That's what happened in Absalom's case. And so we need to watch over people. We need to you know, make sure that people around us, they're taken care of and their hearts are kept right uh, before God and in, in, in what God is doing. That was a mistake and that's a lesson to learn for us. Uh, just, I'll take one more minute. And then in the final years, uh, you know, uh, there, there were great victories. He continued on extending the kingdom uh, like Israel's largest extent. Uh, David made another mistake. Uh, here when he did something that he was not supposed to do uh, but the Bible is so clear here it says like Satan instigated Satan provoked David to do this so it tells us that in you know, as leaders the higher we go we become targets for the enemy and so we have to be that much more on guard to protect ourselves and this is something that happened in David's latter years um, and in his closing years he, 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 he made preparation for the future you know, it's a beautiful story there, how he prepared for the temple, he got everything organized, arranged, and he handed it off to Solomon uh, to not only lead the kingdom forward, but to lead people in the way of God forward. So that's a beautiful, beautiful story. So if you look at some of the mistakes, we see, you know, David and Bathsheba, we see the problem with Absalom, uh, we see the mistake he made in doing the census and the consequences that happened. Uh, so... Uh, this is a beautiful case study uh, when we look at uh, you know the life of David and see how God took him on his journey to fulfill his call uh, and we could just you know uh, think about it together right now we have about 40 minutes uh, so let's discuss ask your questions pastors are here and uh, any thoughts any questions we could share please go ahead Um, all right, um, Ju uh, Stanley, resistancy in the spirit. Stanley, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if he understood your question. Uh, um, what was that? Resistancy in the spirit. All right. Anyone else? Any thoughts? Any questions about preparing for your calling? Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be about the David's life. We just use it as an example. Uh, there are many examples we could use, uh, but please feel free to ask any questions. Go ahead, Sam, please. Yeah, Pastor, so since nobody's asking any questions, I thought I'll kick it off. Uh, Pastor, like in the formative years, right, we see a lot of Bible characters actually go into hiding, um, like David, uh, Apostle Paul. Um, and so when you recognize the call of God on your own life, um, you know, how do we protect that, like uh, that season of, uh, you know, when say we're living in an age where visibility is like so immediate and uh, people want to bring immediate impact. But how do we really protect that and uh, really understand when is the right time to step out and really bring impact? We're not saying that impact is uh, it's subjective, but you, you get the question, right? Like, um, how do we protect that season? when so many opportunities are available and all of that. Mm, yeah. Um, so that's a very, very good question. And I think it's also a very uh, good point. Maybe we can just uh, talk a little bit about it. You know, we're living in a day and a time when visibility is so easy, right? It comes at no cost, zero cost. All you do is set up, you know, something on Instagram, start posting some things. You can become famous, you know, people can see your posts and or whatever, social media, we have all kinds of email, or we have lots of tools we have that can create visibility. So actually, 
uh, we have to be all the more careful, right? Uh, so that's a very good point. So oh, I think the thing that helped me in my own personal journey is just to tell tell myself, I want the increase that comes from God. I do not want increase that is man-made. And I continue with that same attitude right now also. I do not want the increase that is man-made. I want the increase that comes from God. The scriptures that help me is, for example, Psalm 127, verse 1 and 2. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. That means if God is, doesn't, if God is not building this, everything I do, it's going to fall overnight. It's like a house of cards. It's not going to stand. So I'd rather be patient and wait for God to build this rather than me try to build something. 1 Corinthians 3, another passage that helps me. Uh, twice he says, 1 Corinthians 3, I think it's verses 3 and 6. He says, you know, one man sows, another man uh, waters, but it is God who gives the increase. He says that twice. Paul says that. It is God who gives the increase. So I keep telling myself, you know, just wait for the increase that comes from God, right? So even now, in my personal prayer, I'm, I'm, uh, when I'm praying or I'm spending time with God, I'm believing for things that are very big, very big. But I'm not trying to rush into it on my own efforts. I would wait for the time and the increase from God. Of course, in my mind, it's a God, why didn't, hasn't those, haven't those things happened till now? But at the same time, I tell myself, you know, for me, my, my thing is to keep believing God for it, to keep calling things that are not as though they are. So in my personal time, I'm engaging with God, calling those things in that are not as though they are. You know? But at the same time, also saying, let it all happen by God, in God's way, in God's time. Right? So posturing ourselves like that, saying, I only want the increase that comes from God. I refuse man-made increase. I will not, sometimes other people, because other people who can push you up, other people who can promote you, and that's so common these days in Christian ministry. If you have right connections, right networks, you can gain a lot of visibility, but you should intentionally guard against that. Uh, refuse that, those temptations will come. Uh, and you say, look, I don't want that. I'm not pursuing those relationships. I'm not investing my time into those things because I don't want man-made increase. I want the increase that comes from God. So posturing ourselves like that and guarding that uh, and uh, uh, recognizing and avoiding a man-made increase uh, will help us journey with God. Yeah. Hope that helps. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Pastor, good morning. Praise the Lord. This good morning. Is Pratik, Pastor Pratik. Uh, uh, Pastor, my question is, in initial stages, uh, uh, when we go for calling, uh, so we run or we do it very nicely but as we go ahead uh, the things will grow our our areas will grow and uh, that time mm, that time we feel that i feel oh, that personally yeah we lost your audio Pratik. now is it okay hello um i'm not sure i can't hear you uh but we can hear him uh hello yes able to hear you i'm not sure what happened suddenly Hello, yeah. Uh, am I audible now? Can others hear Pratik? I'm not able to hear Pratik. Yes, yes we can hear Pratik. We can hear him. Oh. Okay, now it's back. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. So, uh, so okay, uh, I think I'll repeat my question. My side, let me just disconnect the audio here. Must be a loose okay, Pratik, go ahead. Yes. Uh, sir, in uh, in initial stage of our calling, uh, we run very fast. We do the things uh, very quickly, or uh, we are very eager to do the things. But as the things grow, um, it's like as the things grow and the ministry grows. So sometimes, uh, what I feel that what should I do now? Sometimes I feel stuck uh, because the things have been grown. This should do. This has to be done. Okay, up. there's some problem with the setup here. I can't hear you, Pratik. Sorry to interrupt. Oh. Um, I don't know what this is. Suddenly. I'm not able to hear you. All right. Sorry. Anyone else can speak? Is it? Um, okay, it's not your problem. It's a problem with my setup here. Okay. Um, 
Uh, yes, Pratik, you can go ahead with your question if you would like Pastor Ashish to answer. Maybe you can type it, uh, yeah. or you can. Oh, one way, one way. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just uh, wait for a second. I uh, yes, yes, looks yes. like the situation is sorted. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Can you hear, sir? Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Please, sorry. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, it's okay, sir. No problem. Uh, uh, sir, I'll repeat my question again. Uh, um, in the initial stage of our ministry, sir, we work hard or we achieve many things. But as uh, as our calling or the ministry grows, so sometimes uh, uh, what I, I feel that sometimes I'm stuck. Should I do this, 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 this? What should I do in this situation? Uh, what we can uh, do, sir? Sometimes I am stuck in this situation. Mm -hmm. In the initial stage, we are very eager and we are doing so many things. Mm -hmm. But as the things grow, uh, I feel myself I am stuck somewhere. Are things not growing this way, this way, that way, like like that? So what should we do mm. in this situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good question. So a uh, couple of things. One is we must uh, uh, recognize that God wants us to be fruitful, right? So John fifteen, right? John fifteen eight. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Right? God wants us to be fruitful. So it is not God who is preventing us from seeing growth or increase of fruitfulness. Right? So, you know, otherwise they will say, Oh, God wants you to stay like this. God wants this is all that God has for you. So those are lies of the devil, right? The scripture is the truth. What does the scripture teach us? The scripture teaches us that God wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to be very fruitful. Jesus said, you need to bear much fruit, not just fruit, but much fruit. Uh, God's kingdom is always an increasing kingdom, right? If you're faithful in little things, he will set you above many things. So that's the kingdom principle. But the devil lies to us, say, okay, this is all that God has for you. Be satisfied. No, 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 no. There are kingdom principles for growth. Uh, we maybe we've re hit a place where we you know it seems like okay I'm not saying anything more. Uh, so first is our mindset, our heart attitude that I must grow, right? I shouldn't accept the lie that this is all God has for me. But there are kingdom principles that can bring about that growth. So then we need to seek God, Lord. What is it that you want me to do to step into the next level of growth, right? So we will, what do we see in scripture? We see that positioning is very important, right? It means how we position ourselves, how we position ourselves in different seasons is very important, right? Uh, we can see examples for, uh, you know, when it comes to provision, example, uh, there was a time when God told Elijah, go to the brook Cherith, I will take care of you. So he went there. He was enjoying, everything was needs are met, everything's fine. Then suddenly the brook dries up. You know, uh, uh, what did Elijah do? God said, now you go to Zarephath. Right? Now, could God have taken care of Elijah at Cherith? Yeah. But part of God's plan was you need to reposition yourself. You need to move. And when he went to Zarephath, there was again provision and, you know, bigger things. And from there, he moved on to doing greater things. So that positioning we have to follow. Right? Uh, that uh, and if we don't follow and we stay at Brook Cherith, we might end up dying there. You know, <laughs> Elijah could have died at Cherith. I mean, he could have said, God sent me here. That is true. God sent you here. But now God is saying, go to Zarephath. Right? That movement should happen. The other thing is also recognizing the current moves of God. Think about John the Baptist. You know, John the Baptist was sent by God. He proclaimed a message from God. But there was a moment when the move of God shifted. It, it shifted from John the Baptist to the Lamb of God, right? John the Baptist had his time, but now it was a time for the Lamb of God, right? And so he did the right thing. He said, that is the Lamb of God. The disciples, the Bible says, the disciples of John left him and went and followed uh, Jesus. So the, the disciples themselves repositioned themselves because the move of God had changed, right? What God was doing had changed. So sometimes... Uh, I, 
you know, we need to transition. We need to move with what God is doing on the earth, right? That means uh, we're not disregarding the past. We're taking what we have learned, but we need to step into the new, right? So even that, so in terms, in terms of what does God want to do? How do we adapt? Uh, what is the move of God right now? What is God doing? If we transition to that, we will see increased fruitfulness and so on. So positioning, transitioning with the move of God, you know, understanding what God is doing, uh, and then maybe uh, uh, getting rid of past ways and coming into new ways. Uh, we see this example in, in in the life of Moses, right? There was a first one. Once God said, Moses, strike the rock. At that time, speak to the rock. Both times water came, but how you're doing it is different. You know, once God said, raise up a brazen serpent in the wilderness. But another time he said, you know, later on, that same brazen serpent became a snare to Israel. It means they went back to an old method and that became a snare, you know, to the people. So our methods need to change, right? So how uh, that is you're recognizing how god wants us to work just because we've done it you know let's say for five years a certain way doesn't mean and if you keep doing that it will actually diminish fruitfulness because now there's a new method a new way that god wants us to work you know so that sensitivity that willingness to change must be there so positioning recognizing the moves of god recognizing the methods of god you know and, and definitely, God is, you know, a creative God. Uh, that the way He wants things to be done is always changing. And if we keep, uh, you know, in step with that, we will be able to, you know, uh, see that continued growth, see that continued increase uh, in, in in life and ministry. I hope that helps, uh, Prith. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. you. Um, so. Philip's question, how can we know God's calling for us? Yeah, I will leave it to others. Maybe someone else, the pastors, would like to share on that, please. I know, Pastor Selena, you're teaching. Um, Yes, Pastor, but I, I, I'm not sure if you can hear me because I gave you the headset. So oh, sorry, sorry. That's sorry. why I'm not answering it. Okay, okay. Uh, but if uh, we can, but we, I think I don't we know. We can hear you, hear Pastor. You, Pastor. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you for your question. So how do we um, know God's will for our life? If you are attending the first year, then, uh, you know, Pratik, we are uh, doing the course um, of uh, Minister's Foundation, and we are presently, uh, you know, learning from the publication, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. Um, but having said that, uh, you know, um, I'd just like to mention a couple of things. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You'll uh, be able to prove what is uh, the good, acceptable, and the perfect will of um, God. So uh, we can know God's will for our lives. We can know God's good, acceptable, perfect will for our life. But we need to be, uh, you know, transformed in our minds. We need to have a renewed mind, which means we need to take on the ways and the uh, thoughts of uh, God. And so how do we do that? Um, Another way that we can uh, know God's will and plan for our life is through his word. He leads us to his, uh, his word. Uh, his um, word teaches us and directs us and uh, leads us. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, basically, um, uh, God speaks through us to his word. To the You know, sometimes there's a, the Holy Spirit bears uh, uh, inner witness in our spirit man. Um, also, you know, God orchestrates circumstances and situations in our life where he can open doors and situations and we can know, you know, what is his plan for our lives. Also, we can know God's plan for our life through the uh, gifts that he has given us, the talents uh, that he has given us. And the gifts and the talents that he has given us uh, enables us uh, to fulfill the calling and the function that he has uh, for our lives. And along with that gift, God gives us the grace that enables us to fulfill the function uh, for our um, lives. So these are just uh, uh, quickly a few things that I mentioned, but uh, if you're attending the first year courses, then you will be able to 
understand better even as we learn through Minister's Foundation. Thank you, Pastor. I hope that helped. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this next another question here. How do we know if it is God's will or God's plan? Yes, yeah, I think uh, it's kind of related to uh, some of what um, Pastor Selena shared. And we'll also point you to a, a, an APC book. Um, that's a, a, It's called Receiving God's Guidance. Uh, and uh, if you don't mind, if you can download that book and just glance through it, it, uh, it teaches us, you know, how to uh, see, you know, how to know God's will, God's plan. So that will be useful. Okay. Let's see. Oh, Shubham, you have a follow-up question. If a person does not follow the word, does God still reveal a plan for him? If yes, then how? If a person does not follow the word of God, does God still reveal a plan for him? Well, uh, if a person doesn't follow the word, uh, it is going to be difficult to know God's plan, uh, to understand. I, I'm, we're not saying that God doesn't speak other ways. God could speak through a dream. God can speak through prophetic words uh, and so on. So it is possible. But the uh, you know, to, to answer your question, uh, uh, yes, there are other ways that God speaks. And yes, there are other ways that God can use to speak and reveal his plan to a person. But it's highly unlikely that person is going to recognize it and pursue it, uh, especially if we are not, you know, uh, committed even to the word of God. Uh, so that would just be my response to that question. Okay. Hope that helps, uh, Shubham. All right. Any other questions, please? Um, Sam, go ahead. Um, thank you, Pastor. Uh, Pastor, if you could speak a little bit about. Um adversity because uh you know i mean uh, david's case but in any uh, like especially if you're looking at david um i mean the, if the king of a country the leader of a nation is after my life that to anointed by someone i can't think of a greater adversity than that so 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 in 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 such a huge adversity while at the same time following god's calling how do how do you keep staying on the path um Maybe some examples uh, in today's uh, corresponding to today's day and life. Anything from yours, or or maybe the church. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Sam. So, uh, adversity, challenges, difficulties. Uh, uh, you know, they keep. They, they will be. You know, those things happening in our journey uh, to fulfill. Uh, God's call on our lives. It's not easy. Um, now, when adversity happens, or when we're going through these challenges, uh, under, uh, you know, we we must understand the you know the good side of it, which is um, uh, you know Romans chapter five, verse four and five. It tells us tribulation produces endurance, and endurance brings character. So. The net result of journeying through adversity is our character is built, right? So that's one of the ways through which character is built. You're actually going through stuff in life, uh, challenges, all of that. Character is developed. We actually learn how to hold on to God, how to hold on to His Word, how to, you know, exercise our faith in God, and all of those. That actually happens as you go through real life experiences. So adversity has its value which is in the building up of our character. But going through it is obviously not easy. What do we do when going through it? One is uh, very important is I, I need to see, is this adversity self-inflicted or is it coming through another source? Sometimes you know, we cause that adversity ourselves, either by not doing what you're supposed to do or doing something wrong. So. If that challenge is self-inflicted, then I need to learn from it. I need to correct myself. And you know, sometimes when people come and share about the problems, if we ask them, you know, are you doing these things? And there's no, no, no. So then it's like, hey, you are causing the problems for yourself. This adversity is self-inflicted. 
the, the, the problem here is not about casting out a devil or binding the devil or um, the devil is opposing anything. It's just that you need to change. And the adversity you're facing is self-inflicted. Uh, so the corrective action is you. You know, you you find out it takes. So that's one thing I always look like. Have I brought this upon myself? Am I the cause for this problem? Right? Am I cause? Am I mismanaging something? Am I? So you know. So start from there. Evaluate yourself. Then you say, look, look. I'm doing everything I know I'm supposed to be doing. I know I'm keeping my heart, heart and clean, heart and mind clean. I'm you know working hard. I'm giving him every, you know everything on the table. So then I look outside. Where is this adversity coming from? Is it the enemy coming in? Is it what people are causing? You know, And then how do we rise above this? How do we conquer this challenge? There are some things that are outside our realm of control, which is if there are other people causing problems, you know, it's their choices, it's their actions, then that's when we, we learn to just journey through it and over it. Uh, with faith in God and let God deal with so that becomes a learning process, but uh, um, through it all, through it all, important things to do: keep your eyes on the vision that God has given you. Right, always keep that. Keep refreshing the vision. Keep refreshing where we are going. So the present situation is not going to determine the destination. The present situation of trial and challenge is only temporary. The final destination was determined by God when we started the journey. So keep your eyes on that vision. Keep your eyes on that final destination. That's where I'm going. Uh, uh, keep yourself encouraged You know, through that. That is just by spending time with God, listening to his word. Keep yourself encouraged, strengthened in God. Especially if you're a leader, you have to do this by yourself. Nobody's going to come and take care of you. Uh, you have to do this by yourself. You have to keep yourself encouraged. Uh, as a leader, you know you can't go and get uh, you know get your congregation people to counsel you or something. They can't do that. So that's so important as a leader. Like David strengthened himself in God. You know, for Samuel, I think it's twenty three or something, where you know when when is even his own people were discarded. His own people think about stoning him uh, because they, of what had happened at Ziklag. But it says David strengthened himself in God. So keep your eyes on the vision, and you go as a leader. You draw your strength from God. Nobody can help. Can help you. I'm not saying other there, there's nobody else, but this is something that comes with being a leader. You've got to develop the ability to keep yourself encouraged, uh, keep yourself the keep the vision in front of you, keep journeying towards the vision, and uh, uh, keep yourself encouraged in God. Okay, um, our time's up for today. We just got two more minutes left. Uh, so Sam, I just shared a few ideas and I'll. There's there's a lot more we can talk. But yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you for the encouragement and um, yeah, adversity, um, sufferings leading to character. I think that's that's also a great uh, perspective to have. Yeah, uh, thank, you. thank you. All right, um, we're going to close today. Uh, Vimal, I'm sorry, uh, we may not be able to take your question. We just have two minutes left, uh, so let's pause here for today. Uh, we'll pray, we'll close, and uh, you know maybe there'll be another opportunity to talk about these things. But thanks to everyone for being on the call. Uh, may I request one of the pastors to please pray, and uh, we will close. Right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to just come together and learn God at your feet. And what a privilege it is, God, to to be able to go back to your word and learn and, and i pray god that even as we have heard today on how to prepare for our calling i pray god that each one of us will continue to desire more of you and lord even as we prepare ourselves that we will lord uh, build our foundations on good ground that our hearts will be pure and every seed that is sown in our hearts lord it will bear fruit and we will bear fruit lord for your kingdom we thank you, Father. We commit the rest of the day and all the classes into your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Enjoy your day. See you again soon. Bye.